I'm going to tell you guys a great story right now. Her name is Liz Mealy. Liz Mealy. <laughs> rejection and the bombing, I think it really prepares you for heartbreak. Because, like, what is one person not liking you and so many roomfuls happen? <laughs> really hurt as much. Uh, that's the beginning of a joke I wrote last year, and uh, it actually answers the question I get the most from people, which is, what does it feel like to bomb? Uh, it feels like personal rejection times a hundred. It's the worst. And uh, you never actually get used to it. It never really feels good. Uh, the only thing that really changes is because you do it so much and it happens so often, you actually build like a resilience to rejection. So it always feels like a punch in the face, but you start to eventually learn skills, like some kind of coping skills to kind of mend and mend your own wounds. So um, the weird thing about people asking me that question is we all bomb. Just because you don't bomb on stage doesn't mean you don't bomb in the real world. So I have life bombs all the time. Uh, they happen quite frequently, and they've actually only gotten worse as I've done this professionally. And uh, and you you've had life bombs. They they happen all the time. All all a bomb is is you try to connect with somebody and it doesn't work out. So a good connection for me is you laugh. A bad connection is you stare, or you turn away, or you look at your phone to look for somebody more important. So I'll tell you about my favorite life bomb. Uh, my little sister used to live in Brooklyn, not too far from me. Uh, her boyfriend got into Cal Arch. She was going to move to L.A. So uh, we drove cross-country together. I drove all her shit and her cat across the U.S. It was four very long days. And on the third day, we decided to stop in Albuquerque because we were both really big fans of the Looney Tunes. And Bugs Bunny always said, oh, oh, I took a wrong turn in Albuquerque. So we just wanted to go. So we went, and it was like a cute little town. There's like little shops, and we got lunch. And my sister was going to see her boyfriend, who she hadn't seen in a couple of weeks, so she wanted to get her nails done. So we go into a salon, and um, I asked the woman, I was like, hey, do you have you know, any appointments open, or do you guys do walk-ins? And she's like, sorry, we're all booked up. And I was like, what if I kill someone? <laughs> She just stared at me, horrified. And I was like, uh, well, I'm not going to murder anybody, but I was probably going to chop off their hand. Is that acceptable? Then she starts looking around for, like, emotional backup. So I tried to recover again, and my sister grabs my arm and just starts dragging me out of the salon. And I was like, I'll burn this place down! We'll be back! Because if you're going to bomb, just go with it. Just enjoy it. Um, and we laughed about it because I'm an idiot and I do this shit all the time. Uh, but like 20 minutes later, we went into a jewelry shop. Same thing. I just start life bombing all over again. And I kind of just made the decision that I'll probably never perform in Albuquerque. Because if it's not good enough for Bugs Bunny, it's not good enough for me. Uh, but that's, that's my life bomb. That stuff happens all the time. And I feel like, if you haven't guessed it at, by now, when you go on a date and you tell a joke and they don't get it, or you go to a party and somebody starts staring at your phone, it's the same feeling. Just a lot worse and it happens all the time. So I will tell you about my worst professional bomb. Uh, it happened about eight years ago. Uh, I was opening up for a friend of mine at a college in New Jersey. And uh, there was no host. Nobody warmed up the audience. They just like, give it up for Liz Mealy. And I go out cold to silence. <laughs> Nothing. They don't applaud. I come out. I start trying to mingle with them a little. I tell them some ideas. I'm talking about New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. Look at my hair. It's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. No connection. So then I just start going into my jokes. About eight years ago, I was a little more monotone, and so nothing, no reaction. So then your backup when people don't like your jokes is you try to be personal, you try to talk to them. So I'm like asking them, you know, how long have you been in school, and did you grow up in New Jersey? No one will talk to me. Nobody will respond to me. It's like I'm a ghost, and I don't know what to do. I, have, I haven't been doing, this has never happened to me before. And so then I was like, I guess I'll go back into my jokes. So I start going back into my jokes, and the guy in the back yells, you're ugly! <laughs> and I was like, come on, man, that's clearly not the issue here. <laughs> Huge laugh. The only laugh I've got in like 20 minutes. So then he goes, your face is ugly. 
your clothes are ugly, your shoes are ugly. And that kind of upset me because I really liked my shoes. Like, like they're like these tweed, like, but like skater sneakers. I got compliments on them all the time. Like people love I, I still miss these shoes and it actually really pissed me off. So I was like, hey man, you can fucking disrespect me, but don't you dare disrespect my shoes. I get another laugh. And then I immediately felt the urge to just be myself and I just fucking laid into him. And I ripped this man apart. <laughs> Five solid minutes. Like anybody that's ever hurt my feelings, I took it out on this motherfucker. <laughs> Five minutes. And it murdered. I mean, I'm telling you, everybody was like, yes. <laughs> and so I was like, I have the room. This is what you learn. As soon as you get the room, you have the room. So the guy got up and left because he couldn't handle all of this. <laughs> and I thought I had the room. So I started telling jokes again because I have another 10 minutes and you have to do your time or you don't get paid. And I just bombed for another 10 minutes. <laughs> Solid. So then I bring my friend on stage and then as I'm walking to the green room, I'm like, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Get in the green room, the booker goes, man, that was brutal, right? And I was like, oh, it's fine. I'm like, but super cavalier about it. I'm like, it's cool. It happens all the time. No worries. Where's the ladies room? <laughs> he points me to the ladies room. I'm going down a hallway in a university like, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Get inside, get in the stall, sit in the toilet. Didn't even put paper down. Just start crying. <laughs> so hard. Just immense, like crying about anybody. Just everything that's ever happened to me. Uh, I cried for a good half hour, but I had, he was doing an hour on stage. I had to clean it up because I'm one of those gross criers. I get really blotchy, um, just not everywhere. So then I was like, okay, you've got to time this out. So then I clean myself up, I try to compose myself, my friend gets off stage, we get in the car, he starts driving back to Brooklyn, and I'm, he's like, you alright? And I was like, oh yeah, I told him, dude, it doesn't even bother me. I uh, got home, sat on my bed, and I texted my ex-boyfriend, and I was like, hey, are you around? <laughs> and was immediately, he's like, yeah. He said, have you ever bombed so hard that you got back together with your ex? <laughs> so I want everybody to understand <laughs> that sometimes you don't make a connection with a room full of people, but then you can try again and try to make a connection with one person. <laughs> <laughs> Let's mute everybody. Uh,